Hello, Ed here from Crystal Clear Aquatics. Today I am servicing a pond that's local to me that I see on a monthly basis. This is an ideal opportunity for me to continue with my plant A to Z feature. And in no particular alphabetical order, today I want to talk about the water lily. Now the water lily has got to be the quintessential classic pond plant, even more so than the iris, which I mentioned on my last video. The classic kind of round, split, floating pad on the surface of the pond evokes water like I think no other plant can. And if you're lucky enough to see a frog resting on one of the pads, I mean, that's a real classic pond scene. I was hoping to find a frog today so that I could uh, carefully balance one on the pad for this feature, but sadly it wasn't to be. Now water lilies come in all shapes and sizes and there's a water lily suitable for, for every pond. Whether it's a, a pygmy, such as a helvola for small water features, half barrels and, and tub gardens, up to the gigantic Nymphaea gladstonias and other water lilies that have got dinner plate sized leaves and that will spread and cover a vast area. There really is a lily to cater for pretty much every need. Now water lilies are quite undemanding plants requiring complete submersion um, they do want still or very slow moving water and they don't really like splashing water on the leaves so they want to be kept well away from fountains and, and cascades ideally. Um, they want full sun, they want as much sun as possible and that's really really important if you want a lily to flower prolifically. You might find that a lily will tolerate partial shade and will throw up plenty of pads at the surface but you're really going to limit how much flowering the plant is going to do unless you can really offer it lots of sunshine. Now, a few chores that need to be carried out with water lilies. During the summer months, it's worth deadheading the plant and this will help to keep it uh, flowering freely. So I'm just working my way here through the, the island of foliage, looking for some of the flower buds that have, have opened and since sunk, something like this. Now the two reasons for deadheading the plant, one it's going to send up more flowers as a result, but two, the flower itself is quite short lived, four or five days or so at most, then it will close up and that flower bud will start to dip and sink below the surface and once it does so it will start to rot and decompose in the pond. If you were to leave it, it would then release seeds into the water, but it likes a, a silty bottom for the seeds to, to propagate and in most ponds that's not really going to happen. So we don't really want these decomposing in the pond, so they need to be trimmed off. Also very importantly, you'll see at this time of year that the outer leaves of the lily tend to start to turn yellow. And again, we want to remove these, particularly the brown leaves, because you'll find that once these start to decompose in the pond, they'll produce this surface kind of oil slick. And if you've got a lot of water lily in a pond and a lot of pads and flowers that are starting to die off and decompose, very quickly you'll end up with this nasty kind of oily sheen on the surface. So good, uh, good pond husbandry is trimming back this decaying foliage. And don't worry if you see yellowing leaves on the lily, as long as it's just the outer leaves, it's not a sign of um, lack of nutrients or the plant lacking in anything. It's just fairly typical for the outer leaves to start to die off, allowing the new growth to come through in the centre. Now the water lily is a, a rhizomous plant, similar to an iris. Let's see if I can just get hold of a bit of rootstock down here. There's a little bit. So it's got a thick rhizome. From that, some tap roots will be sent out. And in this instance, the pond is covered in gravel. So these water lilies aren't contained at all. Well, they, they started off in a small basket, but they've since spread out and have rooted themselves quite naturally into the gravel. It's very easy to propagate a water lily and breaking off bits of rhizome like this or some of the growing eyes, they can then be potted on and contained in little baskets of fine gravel or potting grit and allow you to increase your water lily numbers quite easily. Lilies want to be completely submersed. Depending on the variety of lily, 
most, an ideal depth is about two feet of water above the crown. Some of the pygmies, the really, really small plants like the pygmy helvola and the rubra, they would prefer more shallow water, um, perhaps 12 inches or so. Some of the larger varieties will tolerate much deeper conditions and you can get some lilies down to four or five feet of water. In really big ponds, uh, there's a variety of plant called a nufar. It's not a true water lily, although it's frequently called a water lily. True lilies are of nymphaea rootstock and the nufar is a spatterdock or a brandy bottle. It's got very similar pads on the surface, but the flowers are nowhere near as flamboyant as a lily and they are quite a drab um, sort of yellow bulb at the surface. They're quite attractive in their own right. In fact, the spatter dock or the brandy bottle, I think probably is what most people would consider a classic lily. It's got a really, really nice smooth pad on the surface, um, much more so than some of the crinkly leaves that you'll find on a lily. So they're, they're attractive. And other plants with floating leaves like a lily would be things like the Nymphoides peltata or the fringed heart water lily. And that's got very, very small leaves, sends out runners through the base of the pond and has little yellow sort of buttercup flowers. And another interesting plant that will tolerate deep water and have floating leaves like the lily are the water hawthorns, the Aponogetums. And they've got lovely arrow shaped leaves and they will tolerate shade and darker conditions. Again, the flowers are not quite as attractive as a lily, but they're sort of reminiscent of a small hawthorn, hence the name. So they're quite nice. Now lilies tend to be pretty uh, carefree and undemanding as long as you can provide them with lots of sun and a reasonable depth of water. But they do suffer from a few problems. Um, rhizome rot is one issue where the plant itself will end up dying. It's unusual, but it does happen. You can get rust on the leaves. Black fly can infest and, and cover the pads. And if you don't control the black fly, you'll find that the new leaves that, that come through tend to grow distorted. And when they unfurl, they're, they're not a, a true or, or a perfect lily pad. I think the main issue that you're going to encounter with water lilies, and thankfully these plants in this pond aren't being troubled by it, is the water lily leaf beetle. If ever you see the outer leaves on the plant, or sometimes the whole plant, looking like the leaves are being eaten with kind of a labyrinth effect of, uh, of holes and damage to the leaf, that's classic damage from the lily leaf beetle. What happens is the beetle itself will land on the leaf, it will lay its eggs, the eggs will hatch and develop into a little, little grub or a larvae, a bit like a caterpillar that will work its way around the leaf, eating bits and pieces as it goes. And they're a real pest and they can end up decimating, and decimating an entire lily. Management of pests on lilies isn't easy. There's not really any spray or chemical or pesticide that you can use in an aquatic environment that isn't going to cause problem to any livestock or other plants in the pond. So it really is just manual control. Probably the best method is a combination of spraying the surface of the plant two or three times a week with a hose to try and knock the beetles and the grubs off. And if you've got fish in the pond, they'll quite often eat things like that as a bit of a tasty morsel. Um, and also cutting away really badly infected leaves to try to remove more of the eggs and the, and the grubs. Occasionally taking the drastic measure of deleafing the plant entirely um, is the only, only way to prevent this. Now winter care for a lily. Once we get a frost or two, you'll find that the majority of the pads and any remaining flowers are going to start to turn yellow and then brown and begin to break down and decompose in the pond. And as much as possible, we want to try to prevent organic matter and material from breaking down and decomposing in the pond, which in turn is going to encourage and produce nutrients that in then in turn can encourage algae and blanket weed. So once we get a frost or two, it's always worth getting in the pond and cutting back all of the foliage as close to the base of the pot as possible, removing the pads and as much of the stem. Now in this pond, we've got two varieties of lily. We've got the native white water lily, the Nymphaea alba, although it's very difficult actually to ascertain whether it's a true alba or not. Over the years, the, the true strain of alba has potentially been lost and it may well have been hybridized amongst other white lilies. Beautiful white flower, just beginning to open later on this afternoon. Now this one over here is one of my favorite lilies. This is a James Bryden. It's got beautiful, thick, clustered flowers. Lots of bulbs here, which are about to open at some point when we get some sunshine on the pond. 
sadly not playing ball at the moment, but I should imagine by later on this afternoon, these flowers will have opened up and they really are a, a beautiful sight. Again, on here, lots and lots of flower buds that have expired. So I need to trim these off. James Bryden is one of the varieties that will tolerate just a little bit more shade than most. But it's doing particularly well in this pond, in quite shallow water, because it's got lots and lots of sun. Another fantastic lily, if you can find it, is a variety of Nymphaea Texas Dawn, which is a, a yellow flower. It's quite unique in that it has characteristics of a tropical lily. It holds its flowers well above the surface of the water, which is quite unusual in sort of UK um, temperate water lilies. The foliage is variegated, so you'll have kind of green and then reddish um, patterns on the leaves as well. So it's quite an attractive plant, one that's very suitable for larger ponds and deeper water. Now water lilies are a very important plant in a pond and they play perhaps one of the most important roles in shading the surface of the water. Now this might sound contradictory, you want to position a pond in as sunny a position as possible but you then want to shade the pond with plants. Lilies as they come to the surface the pads are going to provide cover and shade to any of the livestock below and by shading the pond we're going to help to prevent some of the green water and the blanket weed that might grow. Lilies also are vigorous growers and use up large amounts of nutrients, helping to outcompete algae like blanket weed and green water. So a very useful plant to have. Now these two lilies are nice and healthy in this pond and you can see that the pads themselves are floating just nice and neatly on the surface and that's the sign of a happy healthy plant. If you see a lily with the leaves growing proud of the surface, a dense cluster, that's usually a giveaway that the plant needs to be split and potted on. And that's either because it's broken through its basket and the rhizome stem is starting to grow close to the surface, or perhaps, and more commonly, as it's broken through its basket, the rhizome and the abundance of pads have become very buoyant and brought the whole plant close to the surface. It's important we don't leave floating rootstock at the surface of ponds for any length of time because during cold winters frost can get to the rhizome and uh, finish the plant off. So if you do see leaves growing proud of the surface, try and get the plant out, split it, pot it on and re-anchor it down into a basket so that it's down at the bottom of the pond where it should be. Right, well I'm going to carry on tidying up this pond and these lilies. I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next pond. Just get the tomato off your face.